Let's return now to the United States and in the early hours of the morning, President Trump used Twitter to threaten to cut financial aid to the Palestinians, accusing them of being unwilling to talk peace with Israel. This was then followed, a couple of hours later, by a tweet targeting North Korea, boasting that he has a bigger nuclear button than the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Joining me now to share her thoughts on these tweets is Leslie Van Jamuri, Associate Professor at SOAS, University of London, and Associate Fellow of the US and the Americas Programme at the Independent International Affairs Think Tank, Chatham House. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Let, let, let's start with the button tweet, <laughs> because on the face of it, 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 like a lot of his tweets, amusing and yet very strange, very bizarre, but threatening at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I think it's only amusing for a moment. It's really not amusing considering this is the president of the United States of America. This is probably what, what many, many people perceive to be the number one security threat. Um, and, and it's very inflammatory rhetoric, right? And, and it's in part for for President Trump, we know he's watching Fox News. He's hearing the the comments. This tweet came moments after the it, report on Fox News. That's right, where he's hearing again what what Kim Jong Un had said about his own nuclear abilities, and he's responding on Twitter impulsively. Nonetheless, it's inflammatory. It creates a back and forth that makes it much more likely that that when when in, if there was an incident that it would be interpreted or misinterpreted right it creates the prospect that miscalculation but, takes but does place. it because that message my nuclear button is bigger than yours is pretty clear well it's pretty clear but it sends a signal it's a very threatening signal right it's not a if you do this, then we will talk to you. It's very threatening. And of course, then what we see is Nikki Haley saying, we won't even talk to you unless denuclearization is on, is on the table. Now, this is not going to happen, right? Nobody actually believes that North Korea is about to get rid of its nuclear arsenal. So there's, there's no very clear strategy putting, being put on the table for how this conflict is going to be managed. Instead, it's just escalation and inflammatory rhetoric. North Korea has responded in part, right? It's responded by turning to South Korea and extending a hand, which is very interesting to watch. You mentioned Nikki Haley. I mean, one wonders what the administration do when they see these tweets, because one suspects they had no idea they're coming. I think that's right. And I think that there's, an, there's probably a very intense, uh, <laughs> I would imagine, 24-7 watching of the, of the Twitter feed. Um, and we're trying to respond very carefully. And I think we see, you know, strategy being developed after the tweets, not before, um, and trying to compensate. Sometimes we see individual members of the administration saying the president speaks for himself. Um, and so there's a lot of ambiguity. Some people think that, that the rest of the world is learning to dismiss and ignore the president's tweets. I don't think that that's, that's accurate. I think, in fact, what we're seeing is that a number of countries are quickly deciding that they need to look elsewhere, that they need to hedge their bets, that they need to develop partnerships um, with those beyond the United States in order to secure their interests, because this is a very unpredictable administration. And as I said in the introduction, just uh, moments before he had a go at North Korea, he's having a go at the Palestinians. And again, mm. the administration is going to have to react to that. Yeah, that was a very strange tweet, because it was very difficult to read. It you know, brought Jerusalem back onto the table, and it, it actually undercut what the president had done when he said uh, that Jerusalem was, of course, now he's saying the capital of Israel. But in that, in that initial comment, he had said the status of Jerusalem still must be determined through negotiations that include the Palestinians and the Israelis. The tweet indicates something very different, right? He says in the tweet, Jerusalem is off the table. That's a much stronger position. Is it policy? We don't know if it's policy. But it, again, makes a very difficult situation worse because it creates more uncertainty. It makes it look like a harder line than was even drawn in the first place. So a great, a great deal rests on that tweet, and yet nobody's quite sure what it, what it was intended to say. And well, what do you think the game is here? Is Donald Trump doing this because, in many ways, the administration has to follow him, doesn't it? So it's rather a clever way, some might see it, of making the policy that he wants to happen happen. Sort of. I mean, I think, you know, for the first seven, eight, nine months of this administration, we assumed, many of us, that most of those tweets were directed at his base, that they were really for domestic consumption. Now it looks like he's playing a very different game. The tweets are partly for his, for his base. He's still saying in the last two or three days, we won't pay for this, we won't pay for this. If you don't do what we want, we won't pay for this. This goes back to the inauguration. His, his campaign strategy was always, America's going to take a much harder line. He's talking to his base. But his tweets increasingly are really pitched at 
America's allies, America's foes, and they really are trying to set policy, but, they're, but he's not sticking with them. And there's a back and forth. So I'm, I'm not, I don't think you can say that they, that they set policy, but they clearly have very certain political implications. They also are a very strong message to those who voted for him, who will say, well, this is what we voted for, and this is a president who's doing what he said he was going to do. And again, I think it's not so much at the level of specifics, but it's the basic message that America will take a hard stand, that this is a president that won't mince his words, that there'll be very direct language, uh, that he won't sort of dress it up in the way that, that presidents normally do. And so there's a, there's a language, there's a way of articulating America's general interests that I think appeals but to a very small number of people. That approval rating has continued to go down. It's very, very low relative to post-war presidents. So it's not clear that it's going to be a winning strategy going forward. It's, not, it, it's a strange strategy to, for a, the leader of the free world to basically say size matters here. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very... Um, the language uh, is, is problematic. The, the pretense, the machoism, all of it. But this has been, again, it's not new. It's been consistent throughout his campaign, throughout the last uh, 12, or nearly 12 months of this presidency. And absolutely, it's in unnecessarily inflammatory and uh, it's, it is inevitably going to be destabilizing. As you say, he's been doing this for a long time. Is there going to be a moment where the media just says, oh, there's another Donald Trump tweet? Or are we going to always react in the way that we are? Because let's face it, we're all talking about it and we're all discussing it in the terms that he would like us to, perhaps. I think this is the really difficult question. What do you do when the president, you know, if it was anybody else, really, mm. you could think about dismissing it. But this is the president of the United States of America. He's got, he does have access, right? He does have the power to make these very significant and deeply consequential decisions for the world. So you can't really dismiss it when he's, when he's talking about North Korea, Pakistan, Israel, Palestine. It's impossible to dismiss. Nonetheless, it feeds exactly, you know, it feeds the machine, right? This is exactly what the president wants, which is the attention and to switch, to switch our focus, to redirect our focus frequently. You know, in the past 12 months, it's been a strategy to redirect our focus away from something that he doesn't want us to think about, which in many cases has been the ongoing investigation of the possibility of collusion between his administration and Russia. So, so it's a very clever ploy, but it's impossible to ignore. Leslie, until the next tweet, good to talk to you. Thank you very <laughs> thank much. You. Leslie Benjamin, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, last year was a record year for music consumption in Britain. Figures from the BP.